Welcome everyone to today's webinar. I'm Heather Punky, Managing Editor with Becker's Hospital Review. We'll begin today's webinar with a presentation and we'll have time at the end of the hour for a question and answer session. You can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled enter a question for staff and clicking send. We look forward to hearing your questions. Additionally, in about a week following the webinar, we will send you a copy of the presentation to the email you use to register. At this time, it is now my pleasure to start today's webinar by introducing our presenters. Morgan Schrader, Manager of Procedural Services at Nebraska Medicine's Bellevue Medical Center, oversees some of the most challenging and dynamic departments at one of the area's fastest growing provider sites. Heading up surgery, pre-op, PACU, cardiac cath lab, interventional radiology, and endoscopy, the depth and breadth of Morgan's responsibilities are a testament to her capability and range. Beginning her career with Nebraska Medicine as an operating room nurse in 2000, Morgan quickly established herself as a leader in Nebraska's most sophisticated surgery department. She stepped into a charge nurse role in 2007 and has served in her current capacity since 2015. One of her most notable experiences has been in serving the IDN's state-of-the-art biocontainment unit, one of only a few nationwide that recently treated Ebola patients requiring some of the most complex treatment regimens ever developed. Morgan has had articles published in OR Manager, been interviewed for Nebraska Public Television's coverage of Ebola, and spoken at industry gatherings like the ANCC National Magnet Conference. She received her Bachelor of Science in Nursing from the College of St. Mary. We are also pleased to be joined by Stephen Spencer, Enterprise Program Manager with Cardinal Health. Stephen has collaborated closely with Nebraska Medicine, a multi-hospital IDN, in implementing the Cardinal Health Inventory Management Solutions technology in support of more than 200 department locations from inpatient care to perioperative services. In that capacity, he has shepherded installation activities, assisted in scoping and developing software enhancements, and engaged with clinical and operations stakeholders to align dynamically shifting objectives while driving consistent results. In prior roles, Stephen has worked for Cardinal Health in identifying and capitalizing on inventory optimization initiatives for Nebraska Medicine and managing their previous supply chain technology platforms. He also served as the manager of inventory management and control for Truman Medical Centers in Kansas City, materials manager for the Nebraska Spine Hospital, and is an account executive for Inventory Optimization Solutions, a healthcare supply chain technology firm specializing in the non-acute and ambulatory spaces. A certified Lean Six Sigma Kaizen leader, Stephen has broad experience with ERP, EMR, and MMIS systems administrations and implementation. He received his Bachelor of Science in Health Administration and Policy from Creighton University. Stephen, I'll now turn the floor over to you. Thank you so much, Heather, and uh, welcome, everyone. We're very excited to be here today. Um, as Heather mentioned, I'm Stephen Spencer, the Enterprise Program Manager for Inventory Management Solutions, um, serving the uh, Nebraska Medicine IDN, and uh, specifically today we're talking about some of the work that's been done at Nebraska Medicine Bellevue. Um, in my role, I collaborate very closely with the uh, supply chain professionals working here on site, as well as with clinical stakeholders. Um, and try to bring to bear some of my experience that Heather mentioned, uh, as well as my time as a, C a Lean Six Sigma Kaizen leader um, to drive uh, process efficiencies and, and bring to bear some of my knowledge about ERP, EMR, and MMIS uh, installation and deployments uh, in support of Nebraska Medicine's more than 200 department uh, inventory locations. Uh, and we're really pleased to have Morgan Schrader with us here today, the Manager of Procedural Services at Nebraska Medicine Bellevue. Um, you know, Heather gave a great introduction, but uh, I, I know Morgan to be an exceptional partner in driving supply chain initiatives and somebody with a very impressive resume of clinical experience. Uh, and, and I am also kind of in awe of her time as, the, uh, as a leader over the biocontainment unit, dealing with some very interesting things with the Ebola patients that uh, were brought here for care in Nebraska. Over the next hour, we're going to dig into uh, not, not just the struggles of managing inventory, uh, but really the focus uh, will be on how that impacts um, clinicians and ultimately patient care and how ineffective processes, um, inefficiencies in, in your supply chain can cause some of those pain points. And we're going to address what I think a lot of people see as a growing gap between supply chain and clinicians, uh, and then how we were able to address that at Nebraska Medicine. Some of the areas that we're going to touch on are, are just the challenges that cross-functional teams face um, and how uh, we can have a direct impact on clinical and supply chain teams, um, the benefits of evolving a supply chain to a more patient-driven uh, approach, and then leveraging automation and technology uh, and the data that it provides to achieve stakeholder alignment. 
but first, let's go ahead and give you uh, just a quick overview of Cardinal Health and Nebraska Medicine. So a bit about Cardinal Health. Uh, we're one of the largest healthcare supply chain companies in North America, if not the world. Um, and you know, we, we have a lot of different facets to our organization. Many of our customers know us as a leading healthcare logistics company. Uh, we're proud of that strong foundation. Um, we're in you know, more than uh, three quarters of US hospitals and uh, we have a, a, an impressive network uh, for distribution that includes more than a thousand vehicles that uh, help us deliver more than 95% of all of our orders to health systems within 24 hours uh, and to retailers within two days or less. Um, and, you know, we've, we've built our, our reputation uh, on that, that cornerstone of the business, but a lot of folks don't know some of the other things that we do. We're also uh, in the product space, so we have an expansive healthcare product offering, um, including the recent acquisition of some of Medtronic's business, formerly Covidian. Um, we also serve our customers by providing uh, business improvement opportunities, optimizing their processes, um, and driving greater performance in their internal supply chains. Uh, and then we also serve to help connect clinicians and patients for seamless care coordination uh, and better wellness. And over you know, more than a, a century really of, of experience in the industry, we've also developed a, a vast body of knowledge around regulatory and compliance information to help support our customers uh, in reducing their costs and improving their level of care with unparalleled reliability. Um, Morgan, why don't you share maybe a little bit about Nebraska Medicine Bellevue? Well, thank you, Stephen, and thank you to Cardinal Health and Becker's Hospital Review for having me share my story today. And really, it's a story and a journey that we are undertaking here at Nebraska Medicine Bellevue. Nebraska Medicine is the most esteemed academic health system in the region, consisting of 665 licensed hospital beds at its two hospitals, and more than 1,000 physicians and 40 specialty and primary care clinics in Omaha and surrounding areas. In addition, we are proud to be named for the fourth straight year, one of the 100 great hospitals in America, a compilation of, of some of the most prominent forward thinking and focused healthcare facilities in the nation published each year by Becker's Hospital Review. We are home to many medical and scientific breakthroughs and are industry leaders in providing extraordinary patient care and clinical research. I oversee procedural services at the Bellevue Hospital, which is located just outside of Omaha a community setting, and while we are a smaller hospital, everything we do feeds into the main campus. When I took this role two years ago, I was told that my biggest challenge would be turning around how our inventory is managed and how we acquired new products on our shelves. Needless to say, from a clinician's point of view, this is a daunting undertaking. But I'm here to tell you that it is possible and it is the opportunity to continuously learn and and, impl and implement different ways of managing your supply chain. Before I dig deeper, let's take a little bit about today's transition and health system. Thanks, Morgan. So, you know, it, it's no surprise that there's an increased focus on uh, quality and, and the care being driven by more value-based initiatives. Um, you know, we're watching the industry move away from fee-based, volume-driven care to a, a more value-based, patient-centered approach. Um, and that's really propelling us into uncharted territory, no matter what role you play in healthcare. Um, you know, I'm sure that there are plenty of people on this webinar that can identify with some of the following issues, things like nursing shortages, uh, the struggle to find quality staff, um, knowing that you have to focus on patient outcomes, but, but really not having clear guidance or, or understanding of how to, to accomplish that and how to solve for that problem, uh, or finding solutions to maintain uh, patient satisfaction and safety. So, not to mention how all of these things impact revenues uh, when reimbursement is declining. And since we're in the midst of this unprecedented change, you know, we're really facing probably the most complicated healthcare landscape that there's ever been. Um, and on top of all of that, we're also seeing an increased role uh, that the government brings to bear in, in our lives in the healthcare industry. Uh, the percentage of people that are covered by CMS is on the rise compared to commercial insurance. Um, and that just impacts even more the influence that government has. Uh, and that's particularly relevant wherever CMS is piloting new value-based initiatives like uh, the comprehensive care for joint replacement um, and additional procedures that are bundled together in, in different payment models. Uh, all of these things are, are leading us to care more and more about the outcomes and the quality that we provide because it's impacting our bottom line, uh, in addition, obviously, to uh, the patients that we serve. And as a result of all of those, uh, all of those different factors, uh, you know, we're really finding ourselves uh, with less and less time to pay to uh, patient care. And clinicians are now spending less and less time at the bedside. So let's take a look. 
Various studies are showing that nurses in uh, medical and surgical inpatient units are spending uh, between two and a half to three hours of their shift performing supply chain related tasks. So, you know, if you think about it, if you have 10 nurses, that can add up to over $200,000 in wasted time in a single year, not even taking into account nurse overtime. Uh, but I think more importantly, that has an impact on patient safety and quality outcomes. Um, with nurses are spending time away from the bedside and distracted by other things that, that may, you know, be more the purview of other departments in the organization, they're not doing what they are there to do, which is to take care of patients. Um, and an interesting recent study that was conducted by CERMO polled uh, 400 hospital stakeholders, so nurses, physicians, service line leaders, et cetera, um, and that indicated that nearly one in four hospital staff have seen or heard about expired or recalled equipment used on a patient. Uh, more than half of those surveyed recall the time when a physician didn't have the product that was needed for a patient during a procedure. And maybe most worrying, uh, nearly 20% are aware of a patient that was actually harmed because the right supply wasn't available at the right, at the right time. And the triggers for not having the right supply at the right time, they're, they're manifold. They could be any number of different things. Maybe a supply area is disorganized or the product is on back order. Whatever the case might be, it's increasing fatigue and workload and strain on clinicians, as well as the supply chain teams that have to support them. Uh, and you know, really what we need to think about is that a better supply chain doesn't just mean reduced costs, but it means happier nurses and healthier patients. With all of these challenges, there's a tremendous opportunity in supply chain to create value in the areas of efficiency and optimized workflows, uh, improving charge capture, and, and really just gaining greater control over inventory. But let's dig into Nebraska's story. Morgan? Stephen, you made some excellent points. Our team was feeling some of the same stressors that you were describing when we started this journey two years ago, and we had quite a, quite a few challenges with our inventory management. I must say that we actually did have an automated solution in place that was handling our inventory, but it wasn't working, and here's why. It was not delivering the key insights and reporting that we needed in a timely fashion. As a matter of fact, I had zero visibility of our supply and the levels on consumption patterns. In a, in fact, two of our rooms had over about over $11,000 in expiring product each month and no ability to uh, really understand and, and manage that inventory without, going, without uh, being manual, an extremely manual process. And we also had too many touch points in the clinical workflow, which resulted in compliance issues and workarounds. For example, if you take a product off the shelf as a possibility for a case, it may or may not get returned to the shelf in a timely fashion after the order captures for the day. And so you could be possibly triggering a reorder for a product that you very infrequently use. So now you have double the inventory and no really way to manage that. And add this to our organization with silo, resulting in gaps with communication and a lot of finger pointing when it came to, man when it came to product management. Because we lacked data on our PAR levels, level, consumption, and charge capture, we were not prepared to have the conversations with finance or our clinicians as to uh, what inventory manage actually looked like at Nebraska Medicine Bellevue. Our knowing that due to uh, declining reimbursements that there was tremendous pressure to squeeze those extra few dollars out of our operating expenses, we had a lot of unanswered questions, and as a manager trying to hit key benchmarks, including patient outcomes and satisfactions, this was extremely frustrating, extremely frustrating. Our expiration process before we implemented this was the stars, the gold stars, the green stars, and the red stars, and our staff would take four to six hours a week identifying and switching out stars to help us manage our products. So really looking at what opportunities were out there. And when we mismanaged our product or accidentally didn't uh, trigger a reorder for expired product, we then had a uh, transition to uh, a provider that was upset. So if we can look at, um, we've all can speak to the situations of which we've had a provider in the room, there's no product or the one-off product on the shelf, and then your clinicians are frustrated, your staff in the room are frustrated, and ultimately they are, are questioning the care that they are able to provide to that patient that is currently in our hands in understanding that. So we knew we had to put this solution in place to manage the supplies so that way we could refocus our efforts on our quality patient care. And there were numerous instances where we just simply didn't have it. 
and it wasn't the case, and it wasn't there before the case, and it wasn't there during the case, and how did we not identify that prior? So I am sure many can relate. It's an emergency case, and you don't have the supply that you need, and the clinician is upset and escalating the staff, and the patient's life is on the line. So with that insight as to where our struggles were, let's take pause for a quick poll. What interferes with your ability to provide excellent patient care or extraordinary patient care? I'll give you a few examples or I've given you a few examples of our experiences at Nebraska Medicine, Bellevue. But take a few minutes to provide your uh, to provide your answers and I'll share you I'll share a story. Is it staffing shortages? Do you just not simply have the staff that you need to do the cases that you have? Or is it the fact that we have no real grasp on our supply needs, our forecasted supply needs, what our consumption rates look like? Is it inefficient workflows from touch points and staff not putting supplies that they did or didn't use back to where they needed? Or is it the communication gaps between key stakeholders? Have you had those data-driven conversations between your supply managers and your clinical staff and managers of that department? Are you working together together in collaboration. So I see that inefficient workflows. Interestingly enough, if you take pause and really sit down and have those conversations with your supply management and your staff in your room as to what are the barriers in your workflow, some of the supply management applications that are currently out there actually will embrace both workflow within the room and understanding the supply needs within, within your department. So let's talk about how we supply, uh, solve some of our problems with inventory management. Let me stress that it was an uphill battle. We had several goals that needed to be met. We needed to build an internal alignment with the the inventory management staff and our staff in the room and our clinicians as to what is our end goal, what is our end result in terms of supply management. And then we also had to allow that alignment to have the authority to make clinical decisions, boots on the ground decisions as to what do they need in their room to, to do the work that they do every day. And then we needed to identify a strong partner. Our strong partnership was with uh, Stephen Spencer and his team through the Cardinal Health. On top of that, we also had several other goals that added to this. We needed product visibility. We needed to improve the ordering to ensure the right amount of inventory was on hand while reducing the waste and expired products, really honing in on what do we need to do our job every day. And we also needed to have access to the data to manage the day-to-day -day operations and to drive clinical business decisions and not have to wait for that data on a two to three day turnaround for some of the current systems that are out there in place. And we also needed the ability to, to view the data on specific levels, including usage, consumption, and cost per case. Highlighting cost per case and with the boots on the ground data allows you to make those decisions from contract. If you buy in bulk, will you be getting a better price on that? But you need to have that data when you're having the discussion, not two to three days later and then add, adding to a follow-up. But I also knew along with internal alignment, I had to empower my, clinic, my clinicians to make those decisions. Without their buy-in and support, we would fail. And it was critical that they felt that they had ownership and that I was willing to support them as they walked through this journey. Identifying a strong partner would also help us execute the decisions that we were making. We knew we wanted to keep automation, but search for a solution that could better our needs. And for that, we turned with Cardinal Health. And here's why. Cardinal Health had the oversight for, for previous applications that we had here at Nebraska Medicine Bellevue, and were willing to pull the data from previous uh, automated systems and really sit down and have, have those conversations on skew rationalization and understanding what product we needed on our highest volume day that we would have in our cabinetry, but also allow for us not to have to trigger an overnight reorder and be able to supply the rooms for the next couple of days. So Stephen, why don't you folks discuss how our partnership helped reduce clinical time in the supply chain? Yeah, absolutely. So I, there are a lot of benefits to automating inventory management, and, and that's really the component that we're talking about today and what Cardinal Health was able to bring to uh, Nebraska Medicine Bellevue. 
Uh, but I think it's important to understand that there can be differences between the types of automation that you might experience in the marketplace and, and differences uh, in the way that those solutions will address some of what I think are, are the key benefits uh, of moving towards a technology-based automation solution. Um, you know, some of the things that we're looking to do, obviously, is to drive supply chain and clinical workflow efficiency. So, you know, reducing the number of, uh, of hours that uh, supply chain is even having to manage generating orders, uh, monitoring data, um, handling recalls, uh, pulling expiration, uh, and then also, of course, the impact that it has on clinicians. So reducing the amount of time that nurses and techs are spending validating that they have the supplies that they need or following up on order interruptions. Um, PAR level optimization is a huge part of automation, simply being able to use a, a, a logarithmic calculation that can help uncover how much of anything you should keep on the shelf and when you should be reordering it. Simplifying the process uh, of ordering and replenishing products, so getting away from those really manual things that you see out there sometimes where people are taking a pen and paper and literally writing down, I need five of this widget and, and two of those, and, and allowing technology to do that for you. Um, and real-time cycle counting. This was a, a big one at Nebraska Medicine. Um, you know, Morgan, I, I think, would definitely echo that she's had some frustrations in the past. Um, just getting a straight answer from supply chain about when was the last time that you came in and did a cycle count of my inventory? When did you validate that what you think is on the shelf is actually there, that it's all, uh, that it's all the product that we want and that it isn't outdated? Um, so having the ability to do that through an automated system is a huge impactor on time. And then, you know, the seamless uh, management of, of expiring and recalled products. So uh, being able to identify out in the field, wherever that product might be on the shelf, exactly where it is, pinpoint it so that you can get it out of circulation as quickly as possible. Um, so that certainly, I mean, the end goal being that you don't want that to ever end up being used on a patient. But let's break this down a little further uh, and, and take a look at some of the, the inventory best practices that we chose to deploy at Nebraska Medicine Bellevue. Uh, it's important to, to think about this not as being a one-size-fits-all uh, scenario. So what we needed to do was come up with a solution that could look at each bucket of products and, and really tailor the best process for managing those items based on their profile. Um, so we have really three different uh, core uh, technologies or, or processes for managing inventory. Uh, and then we have the different pieces of that puzzle that we had to put together to enable those, uh, those technologies and to enable those processes. So we use Kanban, uh, a two-bin system for our low-cost commodity products. So um, you'll hear us talk a little bit in a moment about RFID, and it's a, an amazing technology well suited to those things that are very sensitive, but you need a, a solution for band-aids and for four by fours because in most cases, those are the things that are moving the most. So they may have a smaller impact on your bottom line, but you need a way of managing them effectively. So we chose two bin Kanban for that. Uh, barcoding is great for managing those items that are still potentially lower dollar, but maybe you have some uh, piece of your, your revenue cycle process that depends on unit level tracking. So it might be that you have to scan an item in order to get patient charge capture. Uh, and we use barcode technology for that. And then RFID, um, really the best of breed solution that gives you um, instant visibility down to the individual unit level uh, that can tell you what I have on the shelf and not only what product I have on the shelf, but the specific item with lot, serial, and expiration data as well. In order to do all of this, we need a couple of, uh, of pieces to, to fit together. We have point of use stations, so uh, systems that are used then for nurses and uh, techs and for the supply chain staff to interact with this platform. Um, it has to be something that can be seamlessly integrated into clinical workflow so that it's not disruptive and it's accomplishing what we need with the, the lowest amount of touch points. We need interfaces, sophisticated interfaces that can pull all of the technologies that support a hospital together. So, you know, point of use inventory tracking is phenomenal. That's what really kind of made the difference here at Nebraska Medicine Bellevue, but it would be useless if it couldn't tie into the hospital's materials management information system um, with their EMR platform, um, have the ability to, uh, to feed ADT data for admissions uh, and discharges and transfers. So all of those things are, are critical and you need systems that can communicate. And then the last piece is dashboards and analytics. So we have this incredible trove of data that we're now able to access through this technology, uh, but we need a way of putting it uh, in a format, packaging it in a way that's meaningful um, to supply chain professionals so that they can be managing those uh, materials in the way that you need to from a logistics perspective, 
but also so that it's easy to interact with for clinical staff uh, and, and can serve as a tool of communication between clinicians and supply chain. So let's pause for one last poll. And we're going to touch on uh, a little bit about what might be some of the concerns that you have for adding technology uh, to your clinical and supply chain workflows. Um, so there are any number of different things, and these are just a few of the, the possible roadblocks or, or, or issues that you need to overcome. Um, you know, is it the investment? Is it just the dollars that you have to spend uh, on having a solution that really effectively manages your inventory? Is it a lack of stakeholder support? So uh, are you finding it challenging? Maybe you're a supply chain professional and you're really having a terrible time convincing um, the, the clinical stakeholders that it's a worthwhile thing to put this box in their room that's going to help track supplies. Uh, is it that your teams just are, are struggling with the idea of adapting to and embracing a new process? Um, or you, are you uncertain that you're going to achieve an ROI here? Are you, are you uncertain about the outcomes and benefits and you're just worried about making that, that initial plunge uh, and not having it pay off? So, you know, it, it looks like we're, we're really trending uh, from the results that I'm seeing towards investment. And, uh, I, I'm sensitive to that. So we talked at the uh, beginning of this seminar just about how uh, declining reimbursements and a change in the landscape for uh, healthcare is putting a crunch on us all uh, in, in managing our bottom line. So understandably, the dollars that you have to spend to bring a technology in-house are going to be of serious uh, concern. But I think the key is what are the outcomes? What, what are the things that you're able to achieve? Are you able to um, see an ROI just purely in the reduction of expired and wasted items? Are you seeing uh, fewer steps for the clinicians to be able to find and, and get to the products that they need, which is improving patient outcomes, uh, which in turn is going to have a direct impact on your bottom line? So you need to have the long view, absolutely. And it's something that uh, has to be carefully considered because those dollars, you know, in our estimation and certainly in our experience at Nebraska Medicine Bellevue, come back to you manifold. So Morgan, why don't you talk a little bit about your team's approach to RFID and why it was a game changer for you at Nebraska Medicine? Absolutely. One of the advantages of being a smaller hospital that feeds into a larger hospital is that we have a lot more flexibility when we are implementing and, and really setting the groundwork for what is what an application and a system is going to look like on a bigger on a broader perspective, especially when it involves technology. But shortly after our implementation, we began to notice immediate results immediate results with the clinicians in the room. And, and still to this day, we're just really getting to scratch the surface of, of what our end goal is with in terms of inventory management and, and understanding how supplies are ordered and identified and, and really being able to have those data-driven conversations with our clinicians to, eat, to reach our end, uh, our end results, which is having the product on the shelf that they're asking for in the supply lines that we need in the quantities that we need without expiration is in, in, in being factored into that. So here's why RFID helped us succeed. I went from zero, we actually went from zero visibility, like I mentioned, to having visibility across multiple departments. In future states, we're, we're looking forward to the chance to be able to look at main campus's inventory and, and be able to move product where it needs to be if we we're running on a back order situation and not having to make multiple phone calls to multiple people to get that uh, information sent out. And I'm easily alerted on top of this with uh, when product is being recalled and when we are setting up um, our expiration. You can devise the, the technology and the dashboard capabilities, which Steve will speak to in a little bit, to give you the information when you feel it's, it's most needed. If it's 180 days out for no move product, if it's 90 days out, that's all within your own individual system identification as to what you want. And then we also have a grab and grow approach, meaning you can grab the product off of the shelf, wave it on a station, and it instantly that charge is captured. The nurses aren't having to type in a code, whether it's M dot or C dot, depending on how you are doing charge reconciliation with that. Um, it's a wave of a, a product across a, a screen and it instantly populates. But on top of that, then you actually can go back after the case and make sure the products that you use or you believe you use are tagged to that patient. Um, and at the end result, finance gets really excited that you have an audit process. Uh, for charge verification um, in, in all of your cases. And that is, again, a workflow that you can identify. 
And then it's the cycle counting. Our cycle counting is now done multiple <laughs> times a day versus the endless question that I've asked as to when's the last time we did a cycle count uh, for our inventory. And I know how much product I have, if something is recently populated on the missing list, um, or and then the staff can easily identify where that product may have gone or may not have gone. So cycle counting and in, in, in managing your inventory is truly at your fingertips on your computer, um, at home, or in your office. And finally, we all have the data at our fingertips. Clinicians love data. And if you're having a conversation regarding supplies, you need data when you're, when you're bringing forth any, any type of change to clinicians or inventory management. So we, how much product do we have on the shelf? How long will it take for new products to arrive? What do our PAR levels look like? How much do we need to tweak them, reduce them, enhance them? What is our order triggering at? What is our charge capture and billing? Again, really identifying that work that we have. Um, and nothing makes you smile when you can go into finance and have that face-to-face -face conversation. I have an audit process in place. The staff are doing it after every day or every case, depending on the volume. Um, and, and we can make sure that we are not missing or dropping charges that aren't capturing. And the result is increased staff satisfaction. There really is a buy-in when they have the ability to adjust their inventory or have the data to prove a conversation in regards to a PAR adjustment um, at their fingertips. And they can get in there and make ideas for changes and bring forth all of their initiatives. And really allowing them to have that ownership pro provides a different level of autonomy in that, in that uh, department. So let me also show you how we've been able to control our inventory. We have 100% investment in 100% savings in the consistency of workflows with, with physicians, meaning that they can really get down to the nitty gritty on how they're managing their inventory and supplies. We have an elimination of manual counting. No more uh, gold, green, and red stars on our inventory. It is all done with a report and an identification as to what cabinets that product may be in and getting down there and really looking at what does that 90-day look, look like for expiration of product and not having to put a gold sticker on that. Uh, and removal of expired products happens quickly on shelf. So you do, we can identify where they're at and just quickly remove them so we're not running that risk of, of using them accidentally on a patient. An elimination of rushing ship orders. Two years ago, every product that I had on my shelf when we needed to reorder it was done on an overnight delivery, which ends up being extremely costly. So really being able to step back and understanding what does the delivery level or delivery schedule look like for this widget compared to that widget and how many do I need to stock and, and is it going to be here on a Tuesday or a Monday if we use them all up on Friday? Really having that information at your fingertips is fantastic. So, Stephen, why don't you dig a little deeper into the data and analytics? Yeah, absolutely. So, this is an example of, uh, of one of the dashboards that we can leverage with, uh, with our solution. And I want to point out, first and foremost, that this is sample data uh, because we are definitely running Morgan's department much better than this. But it gives you a great look at some of the, uh, the critical information that's at your fingertips. And, and going back to a point that we made earlier, uh, I think one of the most important things about this dashboard is that it's digestible, it's understandable, and while the information that it gives you is really meant for supply chain to take and run with, it's something that you can make clinical facing. You can put this in front of a Morgan trader and you can put this in front of her staff, and it's information that at a minimum gives them confidence uh, that their supply chain is being managed effectively and efficiently. So you can see right off the bat that we have up here at the top things like uh, uh, specific clinical alerts. If you've got expired product that's sitting on the shelf, you can run out and grab it immediately, know exactly where it's living in your organization to pull it. Um, you know, there are most uh, manufacturers out there are, are kind enough to make their outdates fall at the end of the month, but there are some that I've seen where it might be the 27th of May. And for institutions using a manual process where they cycle through their product once a month to pull out dates, that's not going to be quick enough. So this gives you a great tool for managing those, those uh, critical issues that you need instant feedback on. It's also easy to see different things that, uh, that might be relevant to ordering processes and inventory control. So you can take a look at this dashboard example. We, we can see right off the bat that we have some products that are over par. We can see some products that are out of stock. 
um, items that, uh, that might be in transit between multiple facilities. And uh, Morgan touched on how significant that's going to be down the line after we implement at some of the other Nebraska medicine campuses. Um, but all of this information is something that can be driven through permissions-based logins. So uh, user accounts that are tailored to the specific role that an individual has. And you can really put an uncluttered view of the information that's relevant to them right at their fingertips at their desk, at their home, because this is a cloud-based solution. Um, and it really gives them all of the things that they previously relied on a network of other individuals via calls or emails to provide them uh, in the past. So let's also take a look then at how some of this information is communicating with our advanced integrated analytics. Um, and this is a, a, a dense, uh, this is a dense slide, but this is the view that you can see where you can pull up all of the information that we've packaged up from the usage history, the purchasing, the replenishment, um, the, uh, the capture of expiration and discrepant products, all of that boils down into some very, I think, useful, actionable intelligence that you can use in an organization um, to make some good decisions about what you're doing with your inventory. You can see what your cost is uh, by vendor and by department at, at a click. You can see how your cost per case is varied over time. Um, and when we talk about declining reimbursements, I think one of the most crucial things that uh, healthcare providers are going to have to focus on is looking at, um, you know, Dr. Spencer and Dr. Schrader, and uh, what are the variances and costs between their ability to provide care? Are they getting the same outcomes, but doing it at greatly discrepant uh, uh, inventory and supply costs? So all of this information is incredibly helpful, I think, for a number of key stakeholders in the organization, not just supply chain, not just clinicians, but uh, the folks in finance as well. And you can really uncover some incredible insights. But let's take a look at some of the components um, that form a total inventory management system. Um, so we really wanted to boil down all of the processes, all of the data review and analysis into a couple of easy to understand buckets and, and the key things that need to happen. You have to store your products, and RFID-enabled technology makes storing your products um, something that uh, previously is a nightmare and becomes a joy in the sense that you now have uh, granular visibility into the unit level of where your items live. So it's no longer rack to shelf one and you have it down on a piece of paper. You can log into a system and it can pinpoint the exact cabinet where that item lives. You have to use those products. You have to interact with this inventory system in a meaningful way that supports your revenue cycle and clinical processes. So you can retrieve those products from a shelf, wave them at an RFID-enabled uh, uh, kiosk, and have that not only capture the decrementing of inventory, but also uh, link up to your EMR for charge capture and uh, in some instances for charting as well. You have to replenish these products and an advanced uh, point of use inventory tracking system enables you to replenish products with absolute certainty that you're ordering the right amount to get up to the par levels that you've established based off of your utilization information. Um, and it also can gather that consumption data uh, to provide those advanced analytics that, that we looked at before. And then the, the, the last piece is that you have to analyze and optimize. So we're using this sophisticated system. It's saving us time in our processes, but it's building this powerful a trove of information that we can mine for some real meaningful information. Um, and users have that, that powerful real-time analytics with uh, a solution like this to get that visibility and to, uh, to leverage it for their decision-making processes. Um, you know, Cardinal Health has about a decade of experience with this particular solution, obviously many more than that in uh, healthcare supply chain management and logistics. Uh, but using RFID technology, we're able to automate most of the key processes that you'll find in, in supply chain within uh, the provider site. And we have a presence, you know, in more than 150 hospitals. We've been able to achieve more than 200% uh, ROI on the investment into this solution, uh, often within the, uh, the first 6 to 12 months. Um, we also have, have reduced and refined our turnaround time for deployment to about a 12-week window. So really from the word go until you can be realizing some of these opportunities, the savings opportunities and some of these uh, uh, performance improvements is an incredibly brief period. And our cloud-based solution is able to interface with clinical documentation and other systems to streamline your data capture uh, and really free up. And, and this is the bottom line, to free up your clinical staff, your nurses, your techs, your department managers, to spend more time focused on patient care rather than on manual inventory tasks. So Morgan, what are some of the key wins that you achieved through automation? 
Well, Stephen, as I mentioned earlier, we are still just scratching the surface, and we and we have achieved a, a ton of success so far. Internally, uh, as mentioned earlier, we have achieved total visibility and improved confidence with key users. Clinicians are confident that we have the product on the shelves and the staff can identify where it's located and what our use has been. I, I can plan ahead. I can see when products are expiring and use them before it hits expiration. Again, having those conversations with clinicians. I have two similar widgets. This one is going to expire in 30 days. Can we just use this one? Um, versus the other one that you had requested for. And they have that understanding that we are trying to partner with them in managing our inventory, you know, so we're not expiring out a lot of unused product. And uh, we removed the silos. My operations and finance teams are confident that we are optimizing our supply management in every possible way. And if I have questions, I just turn to the data. If they have questions, we go to the data. And the, the staff can also speak to that data. It's not just me understanding how our product is managed. It is them also understanding how we are managing part product and partnering together to meet our end goal. But most importantly, we've really simplified our workflow. It allows my staff to spend more time on patient care, identifying ways to enhance our uh, patient satisfaction survey results, or meeting those HCAP scores, or we're doing all of those uh, really, truly why we became healthcare professionals, the, the patient on the table, instead of uh, managing our, our inventory. However, this could be done without, uh, without a strong partner, but, but realizing that a, a partnership with your supply chain allows for transparency on both ends of the fence. You know, uh, the end goal can only be reached if, if people are willing to step up and understand the workflows of both uh, departments. And, and we've taken the stride to partner with, uh, with Cardinal Health on this, which has led to some pretty amazing uh, processes driven and, and supply management enhancement. So what's in store with the future? We have several goals, which include, uh, again, to be focused on standardization. Nebraska Medicine Bellevue is down the road, but we have a quite a, a a good amount of, of product uh, variation. So what, is the, uh, what does it look like to standardize that product across campuses and, and being able to purchase more under one contract versus having uh, 10 of this here and 400 uh, up there and, and you know, looking at that. Uh, continue to be well below the standards for waste and supplies. 3% uh, of total product purchased, I believe, is the standard across the field for expiration allowance. And I would like to half that. I'd like to be at 1.5% 1, 1 and, and I, will get, I will get there. You know, probably not in the next year, but in, in the close future. And of course, leverage stakeholders from all the way from leadership to the end, end user. Again, enhancing that partnership between clinicians, the staff in the room, and our suppliers. So we have those data-driven conversations that your value analysis team or your, uh, your standardization team. And what does that look like? So how, effective, how effectively are you eliminating clinicians' touch points in the supply chain? Many of you have probably thought that, that there has got to be a better way to do this, and we're, we're here to tell you that there is. So moving forward, if we have time for question and answers, uh, we again would love to be able to address any questions that you may have uh, for Stephen and I. Yes, thank you, Morgan and Stephen, for that pr fantastic presentation. As Morgan mentioned, we will now begin today's question and answer session. Please submit any questions you have by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled Enter a Question for Staff and clicking Send. We will try to get through as many questions as we have time, as we have time for today. Um, Morgan, the first question that came through looks like it's for you. It says, it seems like your clinical team was really involved with inventory management. Why isn't it the supply chain's responsibility? It is still the supply chain's responsibility to manage our inventory, but we are equally responsible to join in the partnership. So they're managing our inventory, bringing it in for us, but we are also working with them to set realistic PAR expectations and um, expiration data points in, in from that way. So we're accountable to see both sides. Uh, and, and that basic understanding of what supply chain's role is and what my role is as a manager and the staff in the room really, really is a, a relationship that drives the data. That makes sense. Thanks, Morgan. Um, mm -hmm. This next question also is for you. Um, how did your staff adapt to the new solution? 
So we adapted to the new solution with overall ease because they had the ability to have uh, training prior to with the dashboard and understanding what their uh, their product or their information that they were going to be able to access uh, on their computers would have. And the workflow really wasn't an impact that we had uh, a challenge with because instead of having to press a button or type in a product code, we just had to wave it a, a across a, a station and it made their workflow a bit easier. And then they also didn't have to rummage through all of the the non-used product to reach that one product that they did need because we took the time to do the analysis prior to implementation. Removing the 25 that we said that we needed in the room because that's where our product was stored and reducing it down to maybe five. And, and that was our max volume for our busiest day. So they had ease of identifying where their product was at. So overall, I think the, the adaptation to the new solution went very, very well. That's great. Thank you, Morgan. The next question um, is for Steven. It says, my hospital is still using manual approaches. I know I'm not alone. What is your advice to those who are still um, just getting started? You know, I think that probably the, the most crucial thing, because I, I want to underscore that it's not, a, it's not a small undertaking to look at many organizations at taking on a technology solution like this. Um, I mean, you might be coming from pen and paper. You might be coming from another technology that isn't quite um, meeting your needs. But whatever it is, it, it can be a, a large undertaking. And I think that what you have to do is really drive alignment between stakeholders on the front end. Um, so really helping the entire organization understand what the benefits are. It's, it's been my experience that oftentimes initiatives like this maybe start in supply chain, for example, um, and the response is, well, you know, we're already paying you to do that job, so you don't need uh, more investment in tools to do that. That's what we're paying you to do. So the key then is to look to your partners, to reach across the aisle to your clinical stakeholders, to individuals in finance to help identify is there a pain point that you have? Are you spending too much of your time, as they were at Nebraska Medicine Bellevue, um, fiddling around with supply chain needs because the people tasked with doing that aren't able to? They, they lack the data. They lack the efficient workflows. Um, and is finance, are, are they tearing their hair out because they don't understand why they're seeing variances from month to month in inventory valuation? Or they can't get, get uh, their arms around why there's so much expired and wasted product. So you really want to build that case um, and, and be able to present that, I think, to key stakeholders in your organization as not just being a, a tool to make your job easier, but something that's really going to impact the bottom line of the organization and ultimately have a very positive impact, in our opinion, on patient care because you're getting people back to doing the thing that they were hired to do, which is taking care of patients. That makes sense. Thanks, Stephen. Um, the next question is, is there anything about the process of moving to automation that you wished you would have done or managed differently? Morgan, maybe you can tackle that one. I think this is a, a joint uh, question for Stephen and I, but I will I will start it off because he'll have some insight that that I will uh, unintentionally forget. But I believe from our transition experience, we realized that any time that you are moving from one system to another, or to even simply changing cabinetry, the landscape of what you were doing is going to change. Meaning you you initially walk in saying this is going to be a one for one exchange. But when doing so, you're losing some of the valuables of implementing that solution and really skew rationalization and standardization and, and par adjustment. Uh, anytime that you make that switch, do the, doing the due diligence prior, looking at what, and really getting buy-in from your clinicians. Guys, put a yellow sticky note on anything that you use every day, and then let's highlight the, the, the supplies that we don't. So uh, from that, I think I would have taken a little bit more time and really digging into that skew ra rationalization a little bit more and uh, the standardization opportunities. But we're not done yet. I mean, that, that can be done. It's still continuously being done every day. So if you implement a system and you're not really liking the data points that you're getting, then you really just need to step back and, and look at where you're at initially. And, and Stephen, do you have anything for that? Yeah, I mean, I think that Certainly, uh, I, I own uh, the work of my team and myself, and I think that uh, probably if there was anything that we could go back and do differently, we walked in the door and we saw the opportunity to reduce uh, the time that clinicians were spending dealing with supply chain, but kind of forgot that the other thing that we're doing here is just improving the supply chain period. 
So take that as an opportunity uh, when you are going in there and you are changing around the, the physical layout of a room, changing around the configuration of that inventory, what better time is there to really dig in and get some of that low hanging fruit and optimize it? Now, since then, we've let the solution basically drive a lot of that return on investment for us and it's been phenomenal. Uh, but I think that we uh, we could have we could have knocked it out of the park with some very early wins uh, if we'd taken that opportunity to step back and say let's not just wrap let's not just wrap a better solution around a broken supply chain let's fix some of these other things while we're at it so that we can get those big wins. Agreed. That makes sense. Thank you both. Um, this next question is how easily can your solution interface? Stephen. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, that's a little bit of a loaded question. So um, I don't think that, uh, that interfacing is ever easy. Maybe the better way of, of thinking about it is how capable is your solution of interfacing? Um, uh, Cardinal Health has a team of, of truly exceptional interface engineers and, and software developers who are responsible for making sure that all of this works on the back end. And I mean, it's, it's a level of black magic that I can't even wrap my head around, but uh, some truly talented people um, but I think that the important thing is that our system is incredibly flexible on the back end to be able to facilitate those interfaces. So it requires, um, I mean, early, early engagement with uh, with an organization's IT department and, uh, you know, system owners for things like your ERP platform and your EMR platform uh, to make sure that the capabilities of those systems are understood, how they fit into the overall workflow. Um, and how a technology, a supply chain automation technology is going to slot in there and what data it can provide downstream to those systems and what those systems can provide downstream to uh, the inventory management solution. Uh, but the important thing I think as a takeaway is that uh, you know, we've interfaced with, with dozens and dozens of different platforms, uh, all very successfully. Um, and as long as everybody is, is open and communicating and we're defining those specifications, um, I've, I've, it's been my experience that the system is incredibly capable of interfacing. Thanks for clarifying that, Stephen. The next question um, is perhaps for Morgan. Um, how often are you reviewing the data with your cross-functional teams, and what do they hope to achieve? So the, the data is reviewed uh, depending on the processes that you have in place in your healthcare system, meaning that we review the staff are, the process that we've implemented in CAF IR is that the staff review the patient charges and the charge capture after every case or the following day, depending on the volume of the case, for just boots on the ground, initial optimization of what uh, this product can, can put out. Bigger than that or broader than that, from our value analysis teams and our uh, service line teams, we take that data and really look at it for opportunities to standardize and opportunities to expire. So that is either bi-weekly or sometimes bi-monthly or at minimum monthly, uh, depending on the service line, really to get into that data and optimize the solution itself. Again, taking the time to look at what it's, the information it's providing, what do we need to enhance, what do we need to, uh, to make decisions on, and then allowing the staff and the clinicians to make those decisions instantaneously and being able to change it quickly on the um, within the dashboard, so it's it's reviewed frequently, to say the least. That makes sense. Thanks, Morgan. Mm -hmm. um, looks like we have time for maybe one more question. Um, Stephen, a question for you is: Who is tagging the products, the hospital or the manufacturer? Yeah. So I, I think Morgan Morgan pointing at me and smiling. So. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the, uh, the the motivation behind this question, I think, is is uh, it's a it's a good question to ask because I'm sure some astute people on this webinar have recognized that not everything out there is going to ship to you with an RFID tag. So how is that happening? Where is it happening? Um, the good news is that there actually are quite a few manufacturers that uh, are pre-tagging um, their products with RFID, um, and you know the, the that portfolio is growing all the time. I apologize that I can't quote off the top of my head how many there are, but uh, it, it is quite a few. And I, I will certainly say that it is a, a great benefit when it's coming to us this way. Now, as the market shifts more and more towards RFID, you, you'll see kind of a critical mass and a tilting to the point where I think most manufacturers are going to want to because they realize the, uh, the impact it has downstream for uh, their customers. And also, um, quite frankly, it, it supports their own internal manufacturing and distribution processes. Um, but to answer the question directly, um, I, I want to take a step back and, and we need to think about 
what is that tagging doing? So one of the questions that came up from the supply chain staff here, obviously at Nebraska Medicine, was, well, I'm going to have to tag these products as they come in. How am I going to find the time to do that? Um, and we said, well, you know, how much time are you spending doing things like trying to pull expired items out? Do you have to walk the shelves every month? Are you going in and doing cycle counting? Um, unfortunately, in some cases, they said, well, no, we aren't doing any cycle counting. So that's a bit of a red flag right there. But I, I think that the key is that tagging takes about 10 seconds, less than that, five seconds. Um, you have a system that uh, recognizes what that product is by scanning a barcode on it. It's paired up against a, a master database of products that we've built across the entire country with, with hundreds of thousands of items in it, identifies immediately what it is, parses out the expiration lot and serial number, you slap that tag on it and you move on to the next product. Five seconds, five seconds, five seconds. So there is a little bit of an investment in time, but when you look on the back end at how much effort was being put into managing the supplies once they were on the shelf prior to RFID tagging, it, there's, it's a night and day difference. And there's no question that the more efficient way is to get that visibility on the front end so that you can simplify the processes that are going to come downstream instead of saying, well, you know, it's easier for me to just throw a product on a shelf with no tag, but now I'm going to spend a couple of hours at the end of the month trying to manage that item. Great. Thanks for clarifying that, Stephen. I think that makes sense. Um, on that note, we're going to wrap up today's webinar. I want to thank Stephen and Morgan for that excellent presentation and to all of our audience members for participating today. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to having you join us for future webinars.